most important and potent relics, the most efficacious, often take us directly back to the scene of original sacrifice of Jesus, of Mary, and of the martyrs. And they're often body parts. We find that a little bit grisly and gruesome now. And in fact, the exhibition really concentrates on the gorgeous shrines and reliquaries in which they have been concealed, these body parts. The contemporary relevance of relics was demonstrated most powerfully in this very space during the installation of the exhibition, when the Bishop of the Georgian Community in London invited several Georgian nuns into the space for a prayer service. This, in a, in a way, is, is a very important development because it shows really that an object, even in a secular environment like a museum, can still have religious significance for a certain community. But it's to do with bridging time you reach the original, you make a connection across time to the fountain of grace, which is that person who, in the case of Jesus, died for our sins, in the case of the martyrs, testified to that redemption. Uh, I am so moved and touched. I don't think I'm able to talk properly. Uh, this is St. Ketevan, it's so important to George. It's one of the most important saints. The past keeps retreating. So then you need newer generations of saints and witnesses to come forward and give a new archaeological layer that is closer to us. And so we have you know, modern saints. We have Joan of Arc, we have Therese of Lisieux. The relics of Saint Therese have been circulated around the world in this amazing architectural shrine since 1997, which is the 100th anniversary of her death. This desire to be close to the saint, to, to feel um, physical proximity um, to the saint's bones, is, is an abiding characteristic of relic, relic veneration and something which persists to the present day from um, its inception in the Middle Ages. Relics began to be part of a different kind of story, and they moved in the 18th century. They moved into the popular secular sphere, and you got the first waxworks shows. And that period is crucial in what has happened to the idea of the relic in contemporary culture, because that period saw the secularization of a lot of religious ritual. The guillotine that Madame Tussauds brought to London for her waxworks exhibition was sold to her by the executioner, or so he said and it is meant to be the blade that fell on the neck of the queen, Marie Antoinette, who is also in effigy in Madame Tussauds. That guillotine blade has been used by the contemporary artist Cornelia Parker. Cornelia Parker is one of the inspired contemporary artists who has revisited and reworked these structures of imagination that invest objects with far greater meaning than they would carry without the associations that they have acquired over time. People will go to look, for instance, you know, at the robes that were worn by kings, queens, celebrities. These things decked out on the effigies at Madame Tussauds. It's not such a great remove from the medieval experience at all, really. We are going to have this thirst for celebrity this desire to be close to the famous, the charisma, the way they've been charmed and the way objects that have touched them have been charmed. It's part and central to our relationship to history, to memory and to the things that matter.